Hey guys, uh, Rob here. For the rest of this video, this is going to be the longest part, and um, you can skip ahead if you want to, but this is going to be honing the blade. And what I was doing is I was soaking the rock in my sink here, and uh, letting it soak. The reason being is that this is a uh, whetstone, which means that you want water to stay in the stone, and that's what's going to help it. Um, so it's going to make it hone correctly. So I've uh, got my stone here. I've got my, uh, this is a Glenfiddich 12 year single malt. <sighs> it's very good. So what we're going to do is, um, this is how I do things. I'm use a brush here, get it wet. We're actually going to, I'm going to use uh, some soap. We're going to just build a lather. This is going to add a second lubricant to the stone. Oh shit. Knock the phone. Here we go. Okay. Alright, alright, alright. Everything's cool. So, yeah, it doesn't have to be a nice, creamy face lather because all you're going to be doing is um, rubbing it on here. And uh, also, you're going to want your sink full of water and probably a towel. <coughs> I got my towel. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the razor, we're going to dip it in the water over here. And we're just going to start. This is what I this this is what I do, and this is how uh, this is how I've done it for years. Is um, the entire blade is going to fit right on the stone, and the reason there's this this notch right here is to keep it nice and level. And you'll notice part of the reason that the razor is ground the way it is. Let's see if I can get you a good angle. Part of the reason it's it's ground with with the uh, with the spine the way it is this part this is the spine is so that you don't have to worry about how you're going to rotate the blade on the stone this way you just have to lay it flat and it'll hone itself um, I'm going to use I'm using my fingers um, to just to guide it you don't want to use too much pressure here you just want to go. Nice and easy on the stone. We're just going to go back and forth. If you if your stone is too narrow, you might have to uh, use a cross pattern, in which case you have to be very cognizant of your angle. Um, you can kind of, sometimes people go like this. Just if they have a narrow stone, you can kind of use the, you use the edge of the blade and go up and down this way. Um, you don't have to, but that's what a lot of guys do. So we're just gonna run the run the razor on one side, we'll run the razor on the other. I can feel the edge is kind of, and excuse my language, it's kind of shitty on this side on the actual blade. So I'm gonna I gotta run that out a little bit. So and like I said, lots of liberal use of water. Um, yep, and it's going to cause a, there's going to cause some slurry on there, and that's perfectly fine. I'm just going to check that bevel with my thumb. You shouldn't, it should, you can do this on your thumb, it's not going to hurt you, it's not going to kill you. Just run the blade perpendicular to your thumb, drag it through. You don't want to feel any, any. Uh, it should slide through real nice. So it is, let's uh... Let's work that out a little bit more. In some parts you might want to apply a little bit of pressure and um, let me let the camera reset itself here. What the heck? Okay. Um, you'll notice I've lift I lift the blade up a little bit just so I can kind of rub that front corner in a little bit. We don't want to get too much of a 
bevel on that side, but we want a little bit of a little bit of extra work on the front. Since you most people tend to use the front half of the blade when they're shaving, um, you want to pay special attention to the front. And uh, nothing wrong with putting some pressure on that, and kind of grinding out that that front end of the blade. I'm gonna I'm gonna pull away from the camera so I can look at this. Yeah, it's just a little bit getting a little bit better, but it's still kind of crappy. So yeah, I'll just take it on some nice passes. Just run it back and forth a little bit. Also, the other thing to look for too is um, when you're pulling the razor, make sure that it's pulling all the water. If it's not, it could be a sign that your stone's not flat. In which case, we can uh, we can flatten it with some sandpaper if we have to. But I'd rather not. Actually, I should have done that anyway to show you guys how to do it in case you have to. But my stone's in pretty good shape right now. I actually just flattened it a couple weeks ago when I did all of mine, so it should be in good shape. There's nothing wrong with it, so so we'll just run that a few more times on the 400 or the 4000, and we'll uh, do our inspection of the blade. So the edge looks really good. Looks pretty good. It's not too bad. Just needs a little bit more work on the heel. Let's use some circular motions and apply some nominal pressure to that heel. Now I'll kind of help bring that edge around. Alright, so let's uh, let's start some water here and we'll flip it over. This is the 8000 side, it's a little finer. Um, basically same thing same process we're not going to use any goofy X strokes or anything like that because we really don't need to for this side um, that's part of the benefit of using a three inch stone is you don't have to worry about doing like X patterns like this with the blade you can just go straight down straight back up so this is where we're gonna create that final uh, that final nice shine on the blade we're gonna, this is just the finish. Um, I don't, I don't have a 12k um, Chinese barber stone because I don't really feel the need to use it. I'd rather just spend a little more time on the 8k than worry about a 12k stone. And again, I'm just, I'm not applying any pressure. I'm just using my thumb over here on the, on the toe of the blade to kind of guide it. I'm just going to go back and forth. On this stone, you can really see that the the blade is or the stone is nice and flat. That's what the that's what the shaving cream is for. You can you'll be able to see this. Um, if I put some if I put some shaving soap on here, you can see with just a pass that the the stone is nice and flat, which is good. Circular motions, circular. Back and forth motions. Yep. And this can take a while too. Um, some blades. Let me show you one. This is uh, this is my recent antique find. Um, from Fremont Cutlery in, in uh, Ohio. This blade needs a lot of work. Um, I picked it up in Wisconsin. It's a 3.8 blade. It's a little shorter. A little, uh, little smaller than this one. Um, but this one's going to probably, this is going to be a good hour on the hone either way. Just because there's no bevel set or anything like that. So it's not in great shape. So we're going to spend a lot of time on this one. I'm not going to show you guys that because that's going to be a 
tough project. But when you have a blade that's relatively new and in really good shape like this Dovo, um, it just doesn't need much work. That's, that's why I decided to do the video with this blade as opposed to a antique because uh, you guys don't want to watch a four hour video when this uh, it's already too long. <laughs> Frankly I should have shortened it up but I know some of you guys will watch the whole thing and I appreciate it if you do. Of course you can always uh, message me on Facebook or send me an email or whatever if you have more questions but uh, this is basically the long and short of it is this is what we're gonna be doing we're just gonna go back and forth and once you uh... once you kinda feel that the blade is is almost ready you can start uh... see I'll just uh... you can see that it's pulling off it's cut it's shaving hair now that means you're just about done. If you do that, don't get any hair or anything. You know, make sure you're checking your stone out. You don't want anything messing up the uh, surface of, this, of your stone. Oops. Um, so we'll just do a couple more passes and then we'll move on to the pasted strop. The, uh, the balsa balsa strop. We'll do that and we'll finish on a uh, linen and then leather and then uh, we'll be done. And the razor will be ready to send back back to sunny California. So let me just do a couple more passes on here. Oh, another thing. Let me uh, let's do this right away too while you guys are here. Um, I took a I took some pictures of my stuff a couple weeks ago, and some of you wanted to know about the uh, Simpsons Berkeley brush. So let me show you a side by side with the Tweezerman. So this is a Tweezerman Badger brush. A lot of you guys probably have this one, um, and I showed you my Berkeley, and I use it as a travel brush, and you'll see why. It's very small. So that's a side-by-side -side comparison. Um, it's a little smaller brush. It's nice and stiff. These bristles are fantastic. Um, it's a great little brush. So that's the side-by-side. -side. This is a uh, artist shaving brush. It's very small. I frankly don't use it that much, which is why I'm using it to hone. <laughs> and uh, that's about all I found it's good for. It's not a great brush. So that's why I'm using it to uh, work of leather on my honing rocks instead of on my face. Um, of course if there's any other videos you guys want to see um, let me know and I will uh, do my best to accommodate you. But for now I think this is a good primer. This Again this is just a uh, what you know what can I do with this antique blade I bought and I've got minimal time and, and resources um, you know, this is this is what you can do to make that razor look like that one that we worked with earlier, and uh, you know this looks practically brand new out of the box. I mean, we except for that pitting up on the top, but uh, you know, as far as I'm concerned, this is a this razor looks fantastic, and um, I'm probably going to use it later <laughs> after I get back from the gym. I'm going to probably shave with it. Um, that's how I do all my finishing is by actually shaving with the razor because that's to me that's the only test that matters you guys can talk about your hanging hair test or your thumb pad test all you want but in the end if the razor doesn't shave you comfortably then it's not ready to shave with and uh, ideally we don't want to spend that much time on the rock um, I'm just trying to get some final passes in here, and then we'll take a look at the edge. You can you can see that I think, probably be able to see that. See the nice that nice shiny bevel on there. Um, that's water. Don't worry. You know you can see that it just looks wonderful. Again, these are very uh, the Dovo is a very forgiving razor. It's very easy to hone. 
Uh, stainless steel tends to be easier to hone. Uh, it doesn't stay sharp as long as uh, a carbon razor will, but it'll last longer. Um, and you'll be able to get a nice shave out of it every time. There's also up here, I just noticed this, there's a little bit of patina on that gold, but due to the razor, I'm going to leave that alone. It might take a little bit of a steel wool to it to see if I can get that off. But, uh, yeah. So what we're going to do now, let's run more around over here. Just one, one or two, maybe three more passes. Now let's take a let's take a little bit of um. Here, I'm gonna, let's move this freaking stuff here. Let's take a little bit of uh, shaving cream. Put that on my arm there. This is the price you pay to be a Honemeister. You gotta shave your arms once in a while. It looks like it's coming up pretty nicely with little to no effort but it's not quite where I want it yet if we wipe it away I don't know how well you guys can see that but uh, that's pretty good that's pretty much where we want it to be um, I'm a bit of a perfectionist in, uh, in zero areas of my life except straight razors so I'm gonna do a couple more passes on here. This is actual speed. And that's that's probably gonna be good for now. So we're gonna leave it there. Um, let me uh, let me get this cleaned up and I'll show you my pasted strop and then we'll be done. We'll be done. No more. And uh, you guys can go. So uh, I'll be back. Alright, so this is a uh, pasted balsa strop from Larry at whipdog.com. It's just a uh, piece of balsa wood like when you were a kid and you built those model airplanes that's what this is made out of is balsa it's very light um, it's basically going to function as a strop for right now and what's on the sides what's on these on this wood here is a uh, it's a micron paste i'm not sure of the exact measurements i'm going to look it up quick for you let's see if i can find my powder in my drawers I might be able to tell you exactly what it is maybe i don't have it Okay, so I don't have the paperwork anymore, but we're going to start on the red side, and it's just a, it's just a strop. So you're just going to go strop it like a normal razor a couple times. You know, just you guys know how to strop. It's the same thing. That's all you're going to do. And uh, you'll notice, I don't know if you can see this, but there's some red dust on it. We don't want to get that on our green side. We don't want them to mix. So we wipe that off, off the uh, razor. And then we'll flip over to the uh, green side. this. These are great to have if, if you're in between honings and you want to put a nice fresh edge on your blade. Um, Larry will make one for you and send you the powder for like 10 bucks I think. It's pretty nice to have this dual uh, dual sided balsa strop. Um, you just go green red you do you know about 20, 20 passes on each side and that's all you got to do put that away and we're done so uh, I'll see if I can edit a picture in here of what it looked like before and uh, 
what it looks like now. So this is our final product. It's pretty good. Looks a hell of a lot better than it did. And um, I might go back tonight and finish, uh, put some finishing touches on it before I send it out. But for now, I'm really happy with how this turned out. Um, I'm really liking the shape it's in so far. Like I said, I might I might finish the razor, spend a little more time on it. He's not expecting it for a couple days, so I've got more time to work on it. I will. Um, of course, if you guys have any more questions, let me know. Uh, criticisms, comments, complaints, anything like that. And uh, that's it. Thanks a lot, and uh, stay sharp.